Welcome back. So we are connecting to Edo State, uh, where we have journalists standing by for this all-important discourse. We have an Edo group of elections that is due in two days. We have Collins Osai on the phone. Good to have you, sir. Good morning. Hello, Mr. Collins. Can you hear me? Hello. Good morning to you. Can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, thank you very much. All Good right, morning. and we also have um, on Zoom this morning a journalist on the ground, Chinedu Ekeja. Can you hear me? Good morning. Chinedu, can you hear me? Good morning. Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Okay, Chinedu, thank you so much for joining in. Um, Let's just talk about the Edo State elections as it has built all, uh, um, up until this moment. Chinedu, I understand that you've been there for tests and you have followed the dynamics of the politics that play in Edo State. Um, what exactly would form the this or the, the voting patterns of Edo people come Saturday? Thank you, uh, Charles, for having me. Um, uh, like you said, uh, those states is quite an interesting scenario when it comes to it. a very dynamic state. And uh, I'm not that anything different is going to happen uh, come September 21st. So that's in a few days' time, in two days' time precisely. Um, but one thing that is very peculiar in this very election is the fact what um, usually obtains in the past is that the big major the major political parties particularly uh the AT and the pdp have been the major political parties it's, it's not it's always been like a, a two horse race but there's a third force in the election now which is labor party and uh, we've seen a couple of um online polls you know, that tends to, you know, portray different results from what we had, what we had in the past, in which case we're making it difficult for a particular political party to uh, to claim an outright lead, especially um, indicating the results, looking at the results of the, the poll. So it's going to be a quite interesting election and quite difficult to predict as well. In fact, there are a lot of dynamics that are playing out now, you know, that... Um, Many people did not figure uh, will be out. Like the, the, the two major political parties, APC and PDP, have their major uh, the candidate, their governorship candidate coming from the Edo Central Senatorial District, uh, which is a place considered um, many political stakeholders feel uh, they deserve to have the tickets or it is their turn uh, to, to take a shot at the governorship city, state. But um, quite surprising, party, which seem to be pulling quite, um, a significant amount of force in the race. You know, came from the those where the current governor is from. So these are some of the dynamics that will affect the outcome or determine the outcome of this election. Let's Collins. Collins, there have been several people speaking about, especially the political glitters, speaking about the elections. At some point, the state governor says that it's going to be a dire affair. Um, do you get a sense that there uh, might be chaos, there might be violence in these elections that is due on Saturday? Well, as somebody who would be on the field that they covering the election, I want to have a cautious optimism that uh, there will not be violence on that day. I think so because um, even though at the background, just as you have said, uh, political uh, leaders have been making the very serious comments but uh, the, so far, the threat is still calm. Apart from the little uh, troubles uh, we heard from Jean at uh, the airport, uh, airport, around the airport area, you know, during the um, former deputy governor's visit and others, so far, the Benin City and elsewhere in the state has been calm. So I want to also express that, that uh, there won't be trouble. I think much of what causes trouble during the electoral process is um, two things. The process itself, which of course the, the, 
the apex of that is the voting arrangement and the INEX in that day. And of course, the role of the security agency. What could have become not to you know, make such comments? And uh, I am not speaking, but you know, because given the fact that uh, there's been reports of um, harassment of uh, members of a certain political party, in this case, you know, um, the governor's party, uh, allegedly by the police. We on the inter internet yesterday. We could see uh, the police uh, pushing a young who was later identified to be um, a world leader, also into a black um, CM1. And you see some men wearing police, uh, wearing from written police. Whether they are truly policemen or not, uh, it is yet to be ascertained. So, but because of this, that um, uh, the governor is saying that, okay, uh, these people are out for us, we are going to be out for them too. But you know, as they say, it is the elders that declare war, but it is the youth who die in the war. So I want to once again express that cautious optimism that they will shift their sword and uh, play by the rule. Thank you. Okay, so how have the candidates and political parties wrapped up their campaigns in the final uh, days of this election? Mr. Osai. Yes, um, so far, uh, from what we can see, after the mega rally put it by the uh, different political parties, uh, after the mega rally, they have also gone to more of a um, uh, digital way of reaching people. I will be here, and then you see a message pop up on my or you'll be on social media, the next thing you see the candidates of various political parties and in some cases their spouses uh, speaking and appealing to, to voters to please consider their, uh, their options. Then uh, the other one is that uh, I think the main phase of politicking and campaigning uh, has, uh, has come down because of um, as the election is approaching. But people are doing door-to-door uh, -door campaigns. You see political visits, there's the solidarity visits to these people. And uh, I think that is the, the, the line they are drawing for now. Right. Um, Chinedu, um, in the build-up to this particular elections, we, we heard that the police arrested 10 PDP members. And the governor has been talking about that, that if you cannot arrest members of the PDP and expect that peace reign. That's part of the reasons why he even mentioned do or die during the mega rally that happened on Saturday. And I'm, I'm just wondering how, you know, the election that changes uh, giving these developments. I understand that PDP hasn't ever signed the peace accord. How true is this and what's the development regards? Um, Yes, of course, um, you said the PDP didn't sign the peace accord. I was there that day. And uh, funnily enough, on a few days to the PDP peace accord signing, there was um, a peace summit organized by, uh, funded by the European Union for the development of uh, democracy in Africa. And in that uh, forum, the APC also made a threat of not signing the peace accord if the police does not show or do not show the willingness you know to want to uh, to be working effectively to protect the interests of everybody involved in the election but i think i think few days to the signing of the accord uh, a couple of arrests were made including those they felt uh, behind the attack at the airport like collins mentioned um alleged to have been a, a, a behind the attack so they felt satisfied and they they they, they paid the uh, even a day a day to the peace accord they had a press conference and they made it clear that they were going to be present at the peace accord signing but they are not going to sign but i guess maybe after interaction consultation and the appeal from the stakeholders within the, the ranks of the part the rank of the party they decided to you know to put their signature down but the pdp felt there was no need for them to sign because some of the issues they raised were not to them satisfactorily addressed, particularly with regards to the arrest of party stakeholders. Uh, even when they made allegations about those who were also um, feeling violent from the opposition who were not arrested, they, but, but they claimed they had evidence, pictorial, evi pictorial and visual evidence of them having possession of, um, being in possession of illegal firearms. 
and they were not arrested too. So they made these claims and they felt like if they felt that if these people, the police uh, was arresting their own um, staunch men and they are not arresting those from the opposition or progressive Congress, uh, police was not fair. So and that was why they didn't sign the peace accord. But I think there was a twist or the twist to this whole thing. A couple of two days ago, the governor had a press conference with um, leaders of the PDP where they felt quite reassured because they said they had a level of commitment from their independent national electoral commission and the police that the field or the atmosphere is going to be peaceful and they are going to provide a level play playing ground for everyone. So from the body language of the PDP and the governor, um, there's an impression that they've secured some level of commitment from key stakeholders, including the police and the INEC, out ensuring fairness in that election come uh, September 21st. Oh, okay, INEC have said that they are deploying beavers, 5,000 beavers. And we've seen how the usage of these beavers in the last election turned out. Um, are there commitments that, apart from the usage of the beavers, they are not going to use any other thing to collect results? Um, I have particularly been interested in this, um, not just the beavers, but also the other electronic um, um, equipment that will be used to manage the election processes, the, ele the election processes. And one of the most significant one is the IREV, which uh, facilitates the real-time transmission of election results to the public for public viewing. I think I've had the opportunity to ask some of the key stakeholders, in including the chief press secretary to the INEC, uh, in, in one of the forums, we had interaction with them, where, with journalists in those states, and they advised that there will be uh, um, real-time time results from the polling units to the IRF portal. I've also had the opportunity of asking key participants, including the Labour Party candidates, you know, to understand the amount of commitment he has been able to secure from um, the INEC regarding the transmission of results from the polling unit because um, they felt they were their victim of the 2023 election, uh, their presidential candidates who had a lot of uh, uh, matching results, real-time results, and what was transmitted to INEC. So that have, uh, having said that, um, that what the commitments have been shared by, by the INEC, they've been given over again, but it's left to be seen how they are going to implement or show this commitment on the election day. So everyone is watching. One of the big, one major change uh, that people felt was going to be a setback was a full incident that happened um, at INEC headquarters, which affected actually a good number of those facilities. But uh, the INEC chairman actually uh, very, very responsive to the situation. And he came around and they had to use um, equipment, beavers, and the rest of them from who are not actually uh, who are not currently um, having an election, and they said everything is up and running now, and there's nothing they set back from their own calculation. So we are watching to see if they are going to live up to this. All right, let, let, let's bring in Collins to the conversation. Um, Collins, are, are you? I'm here. Collins is here. Okay, um, Collins, I'm, I'm just wondering, there are three major political parties for these elections, uh, the APC, the PDP, and the Labour Party, and all three of them are vying to, you know, take the highest number of votes. We have three local governments within Edo State that has a largest nation. How do you think that these elections would go? Who, who do you take the, the largest chunk of the votes, and why do you think so? My opinion is that um, if you look at the, the, in terms of the now the for the Labour Party. Um, he's a very charismatic person, and um, he, he also enjoys the support of his um, uh, uh, kinsmen or 
people because it's from the those which has uh, the larger largest voting population. But um, many are not also judging from being from the those south and having the largest voting because a lot of the people from the those south are also saying that taking our turn uh, for the, the for the leadership of the state for them for, for two terms now. We should give a chance to the Edo Central uh, to also have their tone. So it would do, it wouldn't just be that yes, you are from Edo, you are going to have all our support. A lot of people from the Edo Central, that you know, let's give the other ethnic um, uh, group uh, or the Asian, you know, Edo Central a chance to also be the governor. And for the two political, the two biggest political parties, their candidates come elected, that is for the APC and the PDP selected from this area that everybody wants to chant. Now, for that of the PDP, he also has um, a, a vast advantage. He has been um, part of the government, you know, even though he was not an appointee, so to speak. He has the economic advisory body and all of that, knows the state and has of the incumbent and all the machineries of the state, a lot of them are with him. Very celebrated person. So he would also garner a lot of so unfortunately again from this area we want to give um, you know, when I say we the, the people of the state, well let us give 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 them a chance to also benefit from position as well. Then for the APC candidates, he also enjoys that benefit of okay. This is the chosen area we should chance to also produce. And again, uh, some of some people are also the, 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 the center when I mean the presidency. When I mean center, I mean the presidency, APC, which is of course the, the government at the, yeah. at the federal level. You know, so there he enjoys his support. And again, he has also had another uh, around him. Very charismatic leaders who are able to speak to voters. But uh, uh, on his behalf, a lot of, on the other, on the flip side of people are to us enough as he should have opened to us. We don't hear him. In fact, the last time uh, uh, I was organized for governorship, uh, candidate by the NJ in every state of these three political parties, the three talked up for it. I think it was the ADC candidate, you know, that came for it. But I can that debate that was by NUG. All of the platforms to speak, you know, the APC candidate himself. I mean other people that have speak for the internship, they don't want him to speak by uh, by proxy. Anybody to speak of him. So he has himself not uh, not gone there. So a lot of people are saying, okay, we don't even know how this person talks. We don't know his idea. If we can't really, if we can't uh, engage us at us in the eyes and at least lie to us if you want to <laughs> or tell us, you know, how do we then trust such a person? So that's also on the flip. So in all, I uh, one cannot tell, but to say that uh, the odds, in my opinion, would uh, want to uh, favor uh, that of um, 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 uh, PDP uh, because um, the, the sentiment on ground and being also that if you go by analysis that the APC candidate is not speaking, the candidate is begging for platform to speak. <laughs> they want to be Okay, Collins. Why the other one does not speak? Okay, we have issue. But he has been invited on many um, national and state television and private media agencies and um, uh, 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 entities, and he didn't uh, turn up for such things. So for some people, we want you. We don't really know what is in your heart. We see some leaders around you on your behalf. In some cases, you find definitely yes. All right. Okay, Collins, many thanks. Okay, we, we are wrapping up. 
uh, let, let me bring in Chichinedu inside ju just to corroborate what you have. Um, Chichinedu, are you, are, you, are you still there? Do you, do, yeah, do you share the same sense um, uh, Collins have dropped as, as relates to what's on the ground that um, uh, Edo Central Senatorial District, it, it looks like it's being favored to the next governor. Um, do you share the same sentiments? And what is the mood of state as regards vote buying i understand that so much education and you've gone into broadcasting and even on the ground and traditional media and online about the um, vote buying and all whatnot but i'm just wondering if you feel that there may be vote buying in the end at the end of um yes of course you put that away well, we're still in nigeria and uh, despite effort by the cbn in 20 uh, presidential election prior to the election of course there was this monetary policy that stopped the system of fund raw cash as part of the efforts to dissuade uh vote buying as an act in an election but despite that we still saw what played out in the election because people have the fund and the effect was that whoever you give a little cash um they would jump out. but that aside uh, i agree with uh colin's analysis in some but slightly um disagree in some aspects in the sense that these three major candidates uh in some aspects they are running neck to neck because a lot of advantages things are accounting for each of them and um, the Labour party can um he appears to be an underdog in many people's you know, ground assessments in terms of um is he on ground do they have a structure and whatever and some other um yardsticks that people used to measure popularity and accent election. But there are people who do not be, uh, appear to be on mainstream when it, when, it, when it comes to measuring the acceptability and popularity of candidate election or in an election. You talk about people who are disenchanted about the system, like we saw in 2020 uh, general election, where you felt, okay, this guy is not popular, he has no structure, and then all of a sudden the table turned around. So I've all, always told people that they should have just anticipate anything in this election. But chances are that you still have a greater population of the youth who are very, very um, undecided. And when it comes to the election day, they might just you know, sway to the side they feel confident or comfortable uh, having tried both political parties, in quotes, in, um, at different times in Nigerian history. So those things and then the governorship candidate the running mate to the labor party is from a donor and of course a donor in the pdp and apc equation do not have such a big stake in the last election they had a deputy governor in the two previous uh dispensation they had um, a governor coming from that side and a deputy governor coming from it was now they are the, the after that they are having a governorship candidate coming from the south and a deputy governor coming uh from their end now the two major political parties um shared the slot different only Labour Party through their uh, deputy governorship running uh, candidates to a donor. So you see the difference. And a donor and a do south produce the largest chunk of the side uh, who becomes the winner in this election. And then in, in, in a do south, like you mentioned, colleagues mentioned, mentioned three major local governments that decide the outcome of every election in the do states already do equal. You know, these are where you have. It's highly metropolitan, and we have independent people who cannot easily be swayed by financial inducement when you talk about vote, vote buying. So it's still very, very, very difficult to see where the pendulum is going to swing, if you ask me. To the candidates' final campaigns, because I understand uh, there are a lot of campaigns, you know, been going uh, on because of this upcoming election Saturday. So, how do the candidates' final campaign promises compare, and how do you view the future of Edo after this? Uh, yes, uh, of course. I, I really would not want to judge sometimes candidates uh, by their campaign. You know why? I, I still I had this belief that the Nigeria political system has refused to change, has refused to grow over time. So the campaign still remains uh, pedestrian talk, that regular here, and impossible promises, you know, very outlandish political promises. Like I will electrify every home and I will build all the roads in those states. And, and the reality, the resources are not there 
people are not asking questions. If you say you want to build electricity, you want to connect everybody to electricity in those states within one year of your being in the office, how do you intend to do that? The current governor, he fought to and nail to be able to install or fix uh, work up, uh, plants that some part of the state are currently enjoying. Because of the legal and autocratic issues that surround the power uh, uh, the market in Nigeria, you don't just and fix. Like the Abia State people gave an example of uh, the fact that job uh, been there over the years and um, what he took advantage of it. And so, so what I'm saying is, I don't see campaigning as you know a strong yardstick, you know, to judge. Most times, people campaign, they say all of, all, all sort of things, but we come into the real element of governance, they see a different thing. You 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 struggle to find resources. You just have. For instance, two billion naira. For instance, then you have uh, a wage bill of over ten billion, and then people will be asked question. You say you are going to do this, but people out there do not understand all of these things. And because politicians are desperate to take over power, they say anything to be in power. So for me, the campaign yet the issue is yes, I, people. It's okay to assess individuals based on what they have done in the past and what they tend to exhibit how much capacity or competence they tend to show or display you know that's a good another good yardstick to measure whether they are going to be able to manage this when they eventually get in, into power but aside this um i'm not looking at that i'll be the road and i'll breathe water as a yardstick but so far so good all the three candidates they've been doing apart from not having some good pop showings that i've seen in some cases like collins mentioned They've been good and they've been very grassrooted in their campaigns. For you, Pete, uh, is awesome, you know, having you. And Osai, Colin, Osai, we are so super happy you joined us and for your input. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right, we're going to head to linking you to Abuja for an Abdustic round. And I am Belinda, and with me is um, Charles Paris. See you later.